Hi everyone, my name is Roberto Santa Maria, and I'm an engineering leader at Apple. I lead the data pipelines team, which is part of the Apple Cloud Services data platform. In today's session, with the help of my colleague, Howie Wang, we're gonna discuss how we use Apache Airflow at Apple. We're gonna focus on a few key areas that we think make our service unique. Then we'll discuss lessons learned or important takeaways. But first, let me give you a glimpse into what the data pipelines team does at Apple. Apache Airflow is very popular at Apple, though some teams prefer to use in-house solutions. Our team is only one of many using Airflow, yet our mission is different than most. We provide a managed multi-tenant solution for other engineering groups. And now I'll discuss how we support multiple tenants on our platform. Multi-tenancy for us is defined as a platform where different business units can run their workloads in complete isolation. We use Airflow for scheduling and, and execution of DAGs and don't actually provide direct access to Airflow to our users. Instead, we've built in a, a custom in-house DAG management web service and UI that handle the isolation and integration with Apple internal services. This DAG management layer handles authentication, versioning, integration with our secrets management system at Apple, and other integrated services. Updating of DAGs can be done through our CI-CD system, or users have the option to use a rich UI to make changes to their DAGs and deploy them directly to Airflow. We also support a YAML DSL, and the traditional Airflow DAG definition in Python. In terms of deployments, we offer push button deployments to all of the regions and clouds that our users have access to on our platform. We've built in an approval process and role-based access controls, as well as integrated with the production freeze schedules that we adhere to at Apple. Lastly, I'd like to point out a major change we've had to make in Airflow to support our multiple tenant setup. Instead of connecting through a direct database connection, we actually relay task information and XCOMS data from our running task instances through API calls. Essentially, we've replaced the direct database connections with a web service. And now I'll hand off to Howie to talk about how we support custom operators. Hey guys, my name is Howie. I'm a software engineer focusing on data pipelines at Apple Cloud Services, and also an Apache Airflow contributor. As Roberto mentioned, we built a multi-tenant pipeline services on top of Airflow. That means all built-in operators and sensors are available to our customers but beyond that, we also want to open the door for our users to develop and share their own custom plugin. Now you can think our platform as a marketplace. A distributor can easily create a plugin by filling out a form in our platform. The form describes their operators, including names, parameters, ownership, version, git source, and so on. After this metadata get propagated into our system, users now can find the plugin in the marketplace and use it in their pipeline. Note that all these steps can be done by users themselves in a self third manner. That means no code reviews is required from us. With ownership defined, that we know who is responsible if a plugin needs to be fixed. And with clear versioning, custom operators are easy for us to manage and evolve over time. Now let's look from the consumer's perspective. Using a customer operator should be no different than using a building operators. Meanwhile, we we'll give the user flexibility to choose a plugin version at create or update. And with versioning and compatibility check, we ensured an existing pipelines were not break in terms of a plugin upgrade. Finally, let's look at the vendors, which is ourselves. Supporting custom operators from different teams could be a nightmare to the operation team. That's why we decided to build a fully self-served platform from the very beginning. 
As a result, our engineers are relieved from the burden of code reviews and plugin deployments. And this is very important for us to scale. I will share more details in the next slide. Well, as a multi-tenant platform, one thing we must pay attention to is security. As a trade-off, self-serve sometimes also brings higher risk. You never know what code a user could put in their pocket. And that's why we must safeguard Airflow Scheduler from any potential malicious code inside of a plugin. And this is how we do it. First, when a user trying to add a custom operator, a mock class is generated with a minimum amount of code just for parsing. And let's call that code mock. Then when user trying to use the custom operators in their DAG, the Airflow scheduler will use the code mock to parse the DAG file, validate listed parameters, but not actually parse or invoke any custom operator code. At runtime, a Kubernetes in neat containers will be bring up to pull the custom operators from the PyP, install the plugins dependencies, and now the, cu the custom operators is available to the Airflow workers to execute the task. So two things about this design. Uh, I like it first, because the Airflow scheduler is protected, we can safely allow users to deploy plugins at their own pace. Second, because the dependencies are installed dynamically, we don't need to restart Airflow for each new plugin, which guarantees continuous delivery. And now for a few key takeaways and lessons learned. The first thing is we had to significantly modify Airflow to support multi-tenancy. The second thing is we extended the Airflow APIs quite a bit in order to support our use cases. But the, the key takeaway here, the main, the main thing to share is there is a lot of interest within our org and within our company to work together with the Airflow community to address some of the gaps in these areas. And we really look forward to working with all of you. And on that note, I'd like to point out that we're hiring. You can follow this link to find any open positions on the cloud and infrastructure teams at Apple, or you can reach me directly on LinkedIn. Please let us know if you have any questions. Thank you very much for your time.